Yo guys, what is going on? It's your boy Cryptic TMG. Today we're going to be focusing on the latest update on Le Mans Ultimate, specifically the update to the BOP and the GTE class. Now I'm going to try the Aston Martin. As they said, they took away 10 kgs and they also added more weight to the Ferrari. So we're going to see how that does around Algarve. Now I'm not going to do this online. I'm going to do this in a private practice server. So the conditions are exactly the same. I'm going to set the car up to be as default as possible, literally exactly how you'd have it for a default race. So you can't really change the setup. All I'm going to mess with is maybe the brake pressure, um, the, the fuel map and maybe the steering ratio, all those things you can change on default in a default race. So that's what I'm going to try and do. We're going to see what the lap times are saying. Um, and hopefully the balance is a lot better than it used to be because from what I, from what I have tried in the past, Aston was well off the Ferrari. I'm talking, it, it's not even worth using. So um, let's get stuck into it. Let's see how the Aston does. So we're going to jump into the setup quickly. Just going to change a few things. Only things I will change is stuff that I'll be able to change with fixed setup. So that'll be like brake bias, brake pressure, and steering ratio. And other than that, it's going to be all default. So we get a, a perfect picture of how the cars are on default. Aston did feel decent. I can't actually say that I can sort of tell that it's got less weight or anything like that. Um, the only thing I would say that I do notice with the Aston is I feel like the TC, like the back end, is a little more tricky to handle than a Ferrari. Even though sometimes you feel like the Ferrari snaps a little more, you always kind of feel like you're in control. I feel like if I tried to run 0, zero on the Aston it would just be a bit of a handful even running 2-2 it was a little bit of a handful tended to snap quite a bit and I feel like in the Ferrari for some reason running TC on zero just feels a little easier now I've said this before in the past I actually believe running zero TC is actually easier than running traction because the traction tends to fluctuate when it wants to work and when it doesn't so that's one thing to bear in mind um, I do enjoy driving Aston, it's cool, but definitely I would say there, there should be more improvements in my opinion. Now we're going to switch up to the Ferrari. We've got a 42-1 to beat. Um, let's see how the Ferrari does. I'm going to do about the same amount, same amount of laps and see what I can do with the Ferrari. Um, but yeah, the Aston didn't feel too bad, but I, I still, I, I can kind of feel, you know, just, just knowing how the Ferrari handles, I can kind of feel where... To me, the Ferrari is just a little bit more agile and I kind of struggled a little bit more than I do um, in the Ferrari in terms of traction. And I, I don't feel like I can run like 0, zero on the Aston without having to really worry about the back end stepping out. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how the Ferrari feels, but let's go. Let's get stuck into it. Thank you. 
Eight. So guys, I'm not sure exactly what that BOP was supposed to be because as you can see the Ferrari is still pretty much a second quicker and I made a mistake on that lap as well. Um, for me, it's just, I don't know man, the, the disparity between the two cars to me is still too big. I believe for the Aston Martin to become competitive, they're going to need maybe like a minus 25, minus 30 kg or even more to even get it in the conversation. For me, I kind of want, you know, the gap between each car to be no more than two temps difference and the driver may be able to make the difference on the racetrack. But um, with the gap being so big, like a second, which I believe it is, I, I don't, you still can't compete in the Aston Martin. So if you're doing ranked races, there, there is no point picking the Aston because it's just not competitive. Now, I do understand maybe they're making the, the, the ballast or, or the BOP based around, you know, what you're able to do with a custom set because I am running pretty much default here. So we don't know how much each car gains once you put a custom set up on it. But the general feeling I get from both cars is just that not much is going to change. Even if you do put a custom set up on both cars, I still believe the Ferrari is going to retain its advantage. So um yeah don't quite know what it was they were trying to achieve with minus 10 kg it's definitely not enough um i, I haven't tested the, the porsche or the corvette yet they may be in line with the ferrari i don't know yet but from what i've seen um on the leaderboards pretty much everyone is still sticking to the ferrari so a little bit more work needs to be done there definitely for the aston martin because it's just it's a non-factor at the moment and you're just literally going to be throwing away ranking points picking the Aston for a ranked race. So, um, yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Save yourself the hassle, man. Jump in the Ferrari for now until they manage to sort it out. Anyway, guys, tell me if you've managed to find some real time in the Aston. I haven't personally in terms of where it is compared to the Ferrari. But we shall see in the future. Cryptic TMG, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to catch my videos first. And peace.